Good morning, Tustin students. This is Greg Franklin. I'm the school superintendent. I'm very excited today to read to you uh, from a series of books that were one of my kids' favorites when they were growing up. Hank the Cow Dog. As you can imagine, it takes place on a farm and Hank is uh, the head security dog, as he refers to himself. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to read the first chapter. It has about uh, 10 or 11 pages in it. Chapter 1, The End of the World <clears throat> It's me again, Hank the Cow Dog. One morning around 10 o'clock, Grover brought some incredible news. He said the world was coming to an end. I had gotten in from work around daylight, washed up in the septic tank, and hit my gunny sack just as the sun peeked over that big cottonwood tree down by the creek. It had been a slow night, but still I was bushed. Must have been the accumulation of long nights. This security work begins to wear on a guy after a while. I'd given Drover the night off, so by the time I came dragging in, he was all fresh and ready to go exploring or some such foolishness. He asked if I wanted to go with him. No, sir, I certainly don't. And here's the rest of it. I plan to be sound asleep when the mailman comes by. You get your little self up there by the mailbox and give him a good barking at. You got that? The smile left his face. Okay, Hank, but I sure did want to go exploring. That exploring can keep for another day, son. I scratched my gunny sack until it was fluffed up just the way I like it. Then I flopped down. What a beautiful feeling. We tend to business first, Drover. And then, if there's any time left, we tend to pleasure. Why do I have to keep telling you that? I don't know, Hank. I forget things. I looked at the runt and shook my head. You forget things? How can you forget that the mailman comes by here every day at the same time? How can you forget that one of the most important jobs is to bark at him? How can you forget that you're wasting my time and I'm ready to go to sleep? I noticed he was staring at my ear. What are you looking at? You got three fleas crawling on your ear. They were coming out of my bed. Dern gunny sack was getting a little ripe and needed changing. You'd think the cowboys would notice such a thing and give me a fresh cake sack every six months or so. But they can sell them back to the co-op for a nickel apiece, see? And that sort of puts a price on my services. You never really know these ranch folks until there's a nickel involved. Give the head of a ranch security a five-cent bed every six months? No, siree. Not with cattle prices what, the way they are. That new gunny sack just might take the ranch down into bankruptcy. So, if you want to know why my bed was full of fleas, there's your answer. It had nothing to do with my personal hygiene. I bathe in the sewer every single day. I make a sincere effort to keep the sand burrs out of my tail. I scratch every flea that shows himself. In other words, I'm one of the cleanest dogs I ever have met, except for Beulah, the collie. And, oh, just the mention of her name makes my heart start whammering around in my chest. How could she love a bird dog when she could have me? What did Plato have that I didn't have? I'll answer that question. Plato was so homely so pitiful, so incompetent, that Beulah felt sorry for him. That's all I could figure. I mean, in a contest of looks, brains, courage, brute strength, almost anything else you'd want to mention, Plato came in dead last. How did I get started on Beulah? I can't let myself do that. And what the heck was I talking about? I can't remember. Oh, I've got it now. Fleas. I was discussing fleas. It doesn't matter how careful you are with your personal hygiene. If the ranch executives are too tight to give you a clean gunny sack every six months or so, you're going to, by George, come up with fleas. And Drover was correct in saying that I had three of the little devils crawling on my left ear. Now, you know what I did? I got my hind leg up and went to kicking them fleas. And fellers, I wouldn't want to be a flea in that situation because my hind legs are very powerful and my claws are just death on fleas. I think you got him, said Drover. I hope they don't get into my bed. Son, when the dog takes after a flea, it needs more than a bed. It needs a cemetery. <clears throat> and that goes for larger animals, too. Now, I'm going to sleep. Tell me what your assignment is. 
Grover twisted his mouth around and squinted one eye. Well, let's see. Mailman. 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 Woof! Woof! He shook his head. Bark at... Bark at... Bark at the mailman. Bark at mailman. Very good, Drover. Now, keep saying that to yourself. Run up the road before you forget again. Okay, Hank. Bark at the mailman. He started off, but stopped. Hank, how come we bark at the mailman? I stared at him. Are you asking me why we bark at the mailman? Yeah, yeah, if he brings the mail, how come we bark at him? Holy cats, Drover, at your age, you're still asking a question like that? Son, if you don't know the answer by this time, it wouldn't do any good for me to tell you. Now, you go on before I lose my temper. Okay, Hank. Bark at the mailman, bark at the mailman, and off he went to the mailbox. I settled into my gunny sack and released my grip on the world, but you know what? I couldn't fall asleep for a long time. I kept asking myself, why do we bark at the mailman? If you look at it in a certain light, it really doesn't make much sense. As far back as I can remember, no mailman has ever killed a chicken, robbed a nest, broke a sack of feed, or done anything worse than deliver the mail. But that there is one of the primary dangers of having an active, superior type intelligence. On the one hand, it's necessary for security work. On the other hand, it can come up with foolish questions. Ma used to say that back at the beginning of time, God built a thousand questions, but only 250 answers. So there you are. Why do we bark at the mailman? Because by George, cow dogs have always barked at the mailman, and they always will. And with that out of the way, I went to sleep. It was wonderful, delicious. Jeez, I love sleep. Nothing gives me more pleasure than to lie there with my paws in the air and have dreams that make me twitch. I don't know what is it that makes twitching dreams special, but they're the very best kind. So there I was, twitching and rolling my eyes and at peace with the world, dreaming of fresh bloody bones and, well, Beulah, when all at once I heard a high-pitched squeal. Hank! Oh, Hank, it's awful! Wake up! I'm so scared I can't stand it! Wake up! One eye popped open. It was a short-haired, stub-tailed white dog, and he was jumping up and down. What? I said. What? My other eye slid open. These are my fresh bloody bones, and next week's an entirely different matter. He twisted his head and looked at me. What are you talking about, Hank? I pushed myself up and staggered over against the gas tank. My head began to clear. What's the meaning of this? The meaning of what, Hank? The meaning of, I don't know, whatever it is you're talking about. You mean bloody bones? Okay, stop right there. Those bones, whose bones? And why are they bloody? Try to remember every detail. Reconstruct the scene of the crime just as you saw it. So far, we've only got one clue. The bones are bloody. What kind of bones were they? Uh, fresh bloody bones? Very good. That's two clues. Fresh and bloody. Now, you've got to concentrate. Whose bones were they? Drover rolled his eyes. I could tell he was trying to concentrate. I guess they're yours, Hank. I, I haven't seen them yet. What are you talking about? Well, I'm not sure. Then what is the meaning of this conversation, and why am I standing here? I, I don't know, Hank. Maybe you better sit down. I sat down and took a deep breath. Drover, I was asleep, and you woke me up. Why did you wake me up? Oh, 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 Hank, I just heard the awful news, and I thought you ought to know. What awful news? The little mutt was shivering all over this time. Oh, Hank, the world's going to come to an end tomorrow at three o'clock. Huh? The world? Three o'clock? That's impossible. No, no, it's true. I heard, I know, it's true, I... I'm scared, Hank. This has never happened to me before. Just then, Sally May came out of the house, jumped into her car, and went roaring out of the driveway. 
throwing up gravel and dust. She turned left at the country road and headed west toward town. Drover's eyes got as big as plates. There, you see, she, she must have heard the news. Well, this was, shall we say, shocking. We didn't have much time to prepare. Furthermore, how do you prepare for the end of the world? As I was sifting through the various options, I heard a commotion up around the house. It was Pete the barn cat. He was jumping up in the air and rolling around on the ground and yowling. It appeared that he'd taken the fits. Come on, Drover, we'd better check this out. We ran up the hill. Something terrible was happening on the ranch, and I had to find out what it was. Hope you enjoyed chapter one.